How many frames per second is enough? Can there ever be enough? Let's find out. Once upon a time, you were happy just to get double figures, and for years, we've had an obsession with hitting 60. But with the rise of high refresh rate monitors and graphics cards that could power Skynet, the conversation around frame rate is changing. And for anyone who hasn't been keeping up with the particulars, it can be hard to try and figure it all out. So what's the big deal with higher FPS and why does it even matter? Let's find out. A few different variables affect your experience while you're gaming. One of them is how quickly your graphics card can actually draw the next frame and send it over to your monitor, and that's the one we tend to obsess over. There's a world of aftermarket cooling, overclocking programs and BIOS tweaks out there with the express intention of making your expensive slab of silicon 3% quicker at rendering frames. But when it gets to your monitor, and let's not even pretend to understand how this cable can transmit such complicated data, but when it gets there, it has to wait because screens can't just fire away new frames as soon as they're ready. They're built with specific refresh rates, which in other words, is the rate at which they actually check when a new frame's ready to display. Your graphics card might be whizzing away at 300 FPS, but if your monitor only refreshes the image at 60 Hertz, it won't see the benefits of its toil. Until really recently, getting your games to run perfectly meant hitting 60 FPS in your monitor's native resolution. That was it. What an age of innocence we were living in, eh? So why 60 specifically? Well, for ages, 60 Hz was the standard refresh rate for monitors. Since flat panel LCD screens booted CRT monitors off our desks, 60 has been the magic number. So when your graphics card's producing 60 new frames every second and sending them to your monitor via, again, who knows, the two devices are in sync. Every 60th of a second, your monitor asks for a new frame to pop up on the screen, and every 60th of a second, your GPU has one ready. When your GPU couldn't keep up that pace, things would get choppy. You'd see stuttering and screen tearing because it didn't have the goods to cough up on your display ask for them. V-Sync was developed to smooth out the pace that frames were given to your display, but that introduced some latency, which some people found just intolerable. We're not really a community of that'll do type people, are we? And that meant there was a definite sweet spot in performance, and it didn't make any use of the extra performance you had above 60 FPS. We can thank eSports for high refresh rate monitors because competitive gamers dictated a demand for super low response times so that they can orp each other through mid and dust two quicker than ever before. As the world of eSports grew, consumer level PC gear, not to mention peripherals, had a new benchmark to aim for. But as with the blue voice microphones in your Pro X headset, and I'm circling back to my point here, I promise, high refresh rate monitors, this kind of pro gamer level kit has become super desirable to make sure you're making the most of your tech. Something like the pro wireless gaming mouse, conversely, is all about making the most of your skills too. Back to the science of monitors though. If yours has a 144Hz refresh rate, it's asking your GPU for a new frame 140 times per second. And if your GPU can keep up with that, bear in mind it's a big if, particularly at 4K, you're seeing more than twice the images per second than you would at 60. That means animations appear smoother, positions of other players are more accurate, and as you move the mouse, your system's able to keep much closer tabs on that movement by asking 144 times every second, where are they looking now? What tiny, fine motor movements have they just exerted on their mouse, and how has that changed what's on screen? What a time to be alive. Now, it's great when everything feels silky smooth in your game and you can forget about the fact that your PC is working away to build that virtual world on the fly, and even forget that it's a game at all. But high frame rate isn't just about making everything lovely while you skip about in a fantasy. For some people, it's the difference between winning in front of a stadium crowd and going home with nothing. Take a game like CSGO when you're reacting to people creeping around corners. The baseline of reaction time is already insane, even on silver ranked competitive matches, so if you're seeing an enemy player position update on your screen 240 times per second with a 240Hz monitor and 240fps versus just 60 times with a traditional setup, you've got an obvious advantage. The same goes for racing games. You might not be using your reaction times to deliver the killer blow in a title like Forza, but again, if you're seeing the exact positions of the drivers around you update every 240th of a second instead of every 60th of a second. You can dodge crashes, lunge down the inside of a braking zone, and anticipate situations much more easily. Okay, so if the difference is visible between 240 hertz and 60 hertz, how about the difference between 500 and 240, or 1000? What can our eyes actually see? 
Scientific studies designed to gauge the reaction time of the human eye have found that we can perceive changes as quickly as one millisecond. In other words, the refresh rate of our eyes is 1000 Hz. So yes, we can see the difference between 60 FPS and frame rates above it, as long as the monitor's refresh rate can go higher too. So will we be posting on forums about how to hit 1000 FPS on Crisis 5 in a few years time? Well, realistically, we're going to have to wait for technology to catch up before we start worrying about going beyond 240 Hz, 240 FPS. I can't hit 1000 FPS in any games I play, and I play a lot of 90s titles with basically three polygons on screen at any given time. But theoretically and scientifically, there is a benefit to going beyond even 240, if our hardware can one day hack it. So that's everything you need to know about FPS, whether you're skipping around in a pretty walking sim or clutching on Mirage to a chorus of rushing teenagers saying, don't peek, don't peek, don't peek. You can provide us with some refreshment by hitting that thumbs up button and make sure you stay in the frame by hitting that subscribe button, smashing it if you will, and turning on the notification bell. We'll catch you next time.